Workshop paint pots are kind of a meme in our hobby. Games Workshop has always put their paint in pots while the rest of the mini painting companies use dropper bottles, which are better at keeping paints, although still not the best containers. That title still belongs to tubes, where the paint is completely safe from moisture, light, temperature, and air. Mini paints are sold to us with convenience in mind, and pots and dropper bottles are easy to keep out on the desk and let you see what colors are inside. I have come to terms with pots in my hobby. I don't really mind them, but I know that they're a little worse at their job than droppers. Although Games Workshop pots are nice as far as pots go, the shape is good, the use of shiny clear rubbery plastic means that you can easily see the color inside, and the one thing that I think makes the Games Workshop pots what it is, is the clear wrapper. It's such a simple idea, but it makes these pots so attractive. From any angle, you can instantly see what color you have, and I hope that all paint companies steal this and use clear wrappers on their dropper bottles. I've moved away from Games Workshop paint for the most part in my collection. I started with Games Workshop, then branched out trying most of the other brands like Vallejo, Scale 75, Army Painter, Pro Acryl, Reaper, Master Series, and a few other odds and ends that aren't even for mini painting, like this Liquitex Titanium White and Apple Barrel Black. And I found that they're all about the same. You can get good and bad paint jobs from any of these ranges, none are really much better or worse than any other, and each have winners and losers in terms of colors. But Games Workshop is where a lot of people start, and it's really easy to get a hold of, so there are some simple tricks that can help you get the most out of your GW pots. Now I think even Games Workshop tells you to take paint from the pot with a brush, but this is wrong in my opinion. The best way is with the back of your paintbrush. Then you can wipe it on the palette and this creates a nice tall blob of paint. And it creates almost zero waste. It's so little it's probably less than you wash off your paintbrush every time you clean it. This blob is perfect for wet plots as you can keep taking paint out of the pile for thinning and mixing and the rest of the paint is safely stored in a drop. Drops of paint will last a lot longer on a wet palette than spread out piles of paint. Games Workshop paint pots are known for gumming up. As you can see, the top should be flush, but sometimes near the hinge, paint will build up and damage the seal. The best way to combat this is to clean out this area of dried crusty paint, but it's hard to reach back there and chipping it out with a tweezer or toothpick is miserable. But luckily, there is a simple, built-in solution. The whole top can easily be slid off the paint pot, and then you can use your fingers and a fair bit of pressure to invert the top. Any gunk should fall right out and leave it clean and ready to reassemble onto the pot. There, now it's sitting flush as it should. Now this might be heresy, but there are some paints I prefer in paint pots, like washes and contrast mediums. I like to take these paints directly from the pot and put them onto the model, where I can use water and medium to push it around and blend it into the model. Skipping the wet palette entirely and using every last possible drop of paint. Now the huge problem with Games Workshop wash pots and contrast is the knockover factor, and I super agree that this is frustrating. I've only spilled one wash in my painting career, but that is one too many. My perfect wash pot would be something that is short and wide. This would get rid of the tip over as the center of gravity would be much lower. This idea has already been done with inks. Dylan Rowney clearly knows what they're doing. Now the more conspiratorially minded might suspect that the wash pots were designed like this on purpose to waste painters money. I think it more has to do with designing something that'll fit into the Games Workshop paint racks that already exist in hobby shops across the world. Either way, it is a solution, but not a perfect one. Games Workshop pots are fine. I don't think they're the worst thing in the world, but I don't think they're that great either. I don't use many Games Workshop pots these days, although there are a few colors I really like. I like Lead Belcher and Corn Red, and I don't think I could live without Null Noil and Agrax Earthshade. Pots are a little annoying. Obviously, airbrush paint and pots are an absolute joke, and if you, like me, have experienced pots and found yourself driven to other alternatives, you are going to love our merch! Say no to pots t-shirts! You can find this design and one more on our website that you can find in the description below. And another great way to support us is on Patreon. We have lots of cool perks, including original Wargaming Terrain STLs, weekly EOB episodes, and Friday Night Discord Hangouts. You can find that linked in the description below as well. Let me know in the comments what you think about POTS, and anyhow, thanks for watching.